reference R41 powered monitors. There's basically two versions to choose from. You have the 41s and the 51s. Uh, the main difference between the two is these have a four inch copper spun driver and the R51s have a five and a quarter inch driver along with a uh, aluminum diaphragm compressed horn tweeter on the 51s and these are basically titanium horn tweeters. Both basically have the same features and they pretty much look the same. Only difference is there's more power on the 51s. These are sitting at 35 watts a piece and the 51s are 60 watts a piece. So if you don't really need that much power, the 41s are fine. But if you've got a slightly bigger room and you need more power, then the 51s are great. So one of my favorite things and probably one of your favorite things about Klipsch is they pretty much are the only ones with that signature copper look. You can always spot Klipsch speakers from a mile away by those copper drivers. So turning the speaker around, the R41 and R51 pretty much look the exact same on the back. You have the same input output on both. Same plate amplifier on both. Uh, you have USB audio. It does come with a USB audio cable if you need to use that. You have your optical, you have your USB for service, probably something you don't really need to mess with or never need to mess with it. And of course the best feature, which is the subwoofer out. So if you wanna add a little extra bass to your system, then uh, it's easy as just basically just connecting through the RCA cable. Uh, you have your auxiliary output, or I'm sorry, auxiliary input, phono, line in, um, and analog in and out for the phono power cord and you have your basically your speaker cable connections right there so here is your ground which if i'm not mistaken i think that's for a vinyl or record player uh, which i assume is probably very popular with these speakers based on the connections on the back alone uh, but then you have a volume knob there's notches you can feel it and you can hear it uh, but they don't stop there's no beginning or ending point so they just kind of you know just kind of spins freely and then you click this in to select your input or select your, um, basically your mode. So clicking the volume button on the back pretty much changes your mode. So you've got purple here, which I believe is the phono input. You have green, which I believe is auxiliary. And then red, which I think would be optical. And then that would be, well, I guess that's supposed to be white, even though it doesn't look white. That's the USB uh, audio input. And then of course you have the blue which would be bluetooth obviously so this is of course the box it comes in no receiver needed smartphone ready turntable ready computer ready tv ready simple setup and dynamic bass equalizer uh i guess i could have done an unboxing for y'all when i first got it but i was so excited that didn't feel like it all right so we'll open it up uh the speaker wire does come with it of course no surprise there it's very long it's like 15 feet long i haven't measured it but it's very long so you can easily stretch it across your living room if you want uh, instruction manual 41 and 51. It looks same instruction manual for both. So I'll take this out of here. Get the, of course, this. Take that out of there as well. So. It does come with an IR remote if you want to use that. I actually forgot it did. Uh, but it does come with a remote if you want to use that. And you have your little sticky pads that go on the bottom of the speaker so you don't damage them by scraping them across whatever surface you're putting them on. There is no power switch on the back of the plate amp. I found that the only way to turn these off is to use the provided remote with the power switch on top. So basically just press that and it will turn it off. So like I said, no power switch on the back. You only can turn it off with the remote provided. Now I don't have a sub, so I can't really show you all exactly how that works, but I'm pretty sure it's just straightforward. Basically just plug the sub into the sub out port and I'm pretty sure it's all it works. But in order to get the maximum sound and the best sound quality possible, I would of course recommend getting an actual Eclipse sub for these. Which is pretty much what I plan on doing anyways. This is the R100SW, and I'll be getting this to go along with the R41s over there. Because it's only 150 watts, and you really don't need anything more than this for something that small. Because while these do sound amazing, the mids and highs are incredible, they do seem like they're still missing something. And that something is a subwoofer. just in case you were wondering of course these are only four inch drivers so the frequency response it really isn't going to go that low but you have uh, 76 hertz all the way to 21 kilohertz so the r51 pms are 68 hertz minimum and basically 21,000 kilohertz or 21,000 hertz uh, so you have a, a slightly lower frequency response on the 51s only because the drivers are bigger 
So here is the potential issue I have with these. Potential, not the issue, potential. So speakers usually last a long time. Speakers last decades, you know, 30, 40 years, and these will be no different. Uh, it's a high quality company, but there's really not much to a speaker. You have the driver, you have the tweeter, you have a crossover network. Basically, that's all that's inside of, of monitors and speakers. But these have an amplifier built into them, or at least this one. So the speakers are only gonna last as long as the amplifier lasts. I mean, I guess technically later on in line, if something does happen, you can always replace the plate amp, but who wants to do that? So hopefully, I'm, well, I'm sure this is a, a high quality company. Hopefully Klitsch took that in consideration and used quality parts for the amplifier, because if the amplifier uses quality parts, then there's no reason to believe, uh, there's no reason to doubt that these speakers won't last 40 years as well. So always a thing to remember. probably asking is how do they actually sound? So I totally understand that some people have different tastes in music, but electronic music sounds incredible on these because it has a mixture of lows, mids, and highs that are phenomenal. So the conclusion is these things sound incredible. The mids and highs are completely breathtaking. You can hear every single tiny little detail of the song. And I appreciate you all for watching. Have any questions? Reach me in the comments.